Hello everyone, Miss Benita here, and today is the last lesson for ecosystems restoration. Are you ready? Claude and Ruby are, but they also want to remind you of a few things. Claude thinks that you should make sure you have your thinking cap on because we will be writing our final explanation and wrapping up all that we have learned during this unit. Ruby suggests that you have the packet ready with the writing pencil. And if you don't have the packet, a piece of paper is just fine as well. And they also want to remind you that if a family member is available, that they can also join you in completing this last lesson. All right, here we go. Ecosystem restoration. Lesson 3.6, Arguments about Soil in the Ecosystem. The purpose for today's video is for you to demonstrate what you have learned about both the scientific practice of argumentation and scientific ideas about the important role that decomposers play in the health of ecosystems. Now let's start with this word argument. Remember, an argument in science is not a disagreement between two people, nor is it something that you need to get angry about. It is the use of evidence to say why one idea is the best. All right. So in our last lesson, you use these evidence cards to get your thoughts together around answering why decomposers are important. What is a scientific argument? It answers a question with a claim about the natural world. It includes evidence to support the claim. Evidence can be data from the project area, ideas from investigations, and ideas from books. It connects that evidence to the claim by linking different pieces of evidence together to show how they support the claim. This is a really important point right here. It is written for an audience, it uses scientific language, and it ends with a conclusion. Now, you don't have to remember all of these points because in your packet and here in this video is a checklist that you can use while you write your argument. Now, we've seen this before. So let's review it one last time. Evidence is both data and scientific ideas, and neither kind of evidence is enough by itself. A strong argument links the data and scientific ideas together to explain how the claim is supported. Now you've seen that in your checklist. That is points three. Did I connect the evidence to the claim by linking different pieces of evidence together? And the use of scientific language to help you link those two together. Okay, so you have this in your packet. Use it as your resource. These are great ways to start off your sentences that will help you keep in mind how you want to link your ideas together from those evidence cards and your evidence from other places in the unit. Also, another suggestion I'd like to provide is if you have a family member available to look over your writing, they can look through that checklist to help you see whether you have all the components of a scientific argument. Turn to this page in your packet, Rainforest Restoration Plan 3. This is where you'll write an argument about why the Sacopia trees are not growing and thriving in the soil based on the evidence that you've gathered. We'll see you in a bit. All right, let's review. Here we have a sample. The evidence shows that there are fewer nutrients in the soil, in the project area, than in the healthy rainforest. For example, there is low nitrogen in the project area, but there is high nitrogen in the healthy rainforest. This matters because plants need nutrients to help make the food molecules they need for energy and for body matter. 
This means that the cercopia trees aren't getting the nutrients that they need to grow and thrive. All right, let's take, let's pull up our checklist here. Did we begin with a claim that answers the question? Well, what's nice about this handout is that the claim is written here. The scopia trees aren't growing and thriving because there are not enough decomposers in the soil. So let's, everybody can check that one off. Now let's take a look at the second one. Where's our evidence? Let's see, well here it is. There is low nitrogen in the project area, but there is high in the healthy rainforest. And where did we get that? We got that from evidence card four. Remember this, All right? But that's just one piece of evidence. We need multiple pieces of evidence. We'll go ahead and check this off for right now, but it would be nice to have more than one check in this box. Look at what's in red. The evidence shows, for example, this matters because this means that, yeah, those are ways of using your scientific language to help link ideas together. Now let's take a look at those linked ideas. Right here. This matters because plants need nutrients. This part of the, of the argument explains why the evidence matters. And that's an important part of an argument. So we'll check that box there. Boxes that aren't checked off yet are the use of a specific audience and ending with a conclusion. But you definitely want to make sure that you have multiple sources of evidence because you are trying to support this claim that there are not enough decomposers in the soil and that's why the Sokopia trees are not thriving. Make sure you add that concluding sentence that wraps it all up. We'll see you in a bit. All right, activity two, action steps for restoring the rainforest. I hope you will take your writing to your next class meeting and share some of those ideas that you've written down and specifically how you linked your evidence together. All right, activity two. You've seen this before. We've investigated why the Sokopia trees aren't growing and thriving. We've written that argument that you just did, and now it's time to suggest an action step to improve the health of the soil in this ecosystem. You've done this before. In chapter one, we've worked together to come up with steps for improving the health of the animals in the ecosystem. We decided that we would add more plants to the ecosystem. Okay, in chapter two, you suggested an action step to restore the health of the Sokopia trees. You most likely suggested that the Sokopia trees needed more water and that water molecules help them build their body matter. Now for chapter three's action step, we need to consider that we've read several restoration plans. Remember, the restoration plans include suggested actions to help an ecosystem recover from damage. Now that you understand that the soil is the reason why the Sokopia trees aren't growing and thriving in the project area, you can recommend action steps to restore the health of the soil and the trees in the ecosystem. Turn to this page in your packet, Rainforest Restoration Plan 3, Action Step. This is where you will write. And again, if you do not have the packet, this paper is all you need with a writing utensil. So this is where you'll write your action step. Let's begin by recording the purpose to restore the health of the soil, right? That's important to start with a purpose. We'll see you back in a bit. So what action steps did you recommend? Did you recommend that the soil needs decomposers to be healthy and thriving? All right, this is the second half of our lesson for today, modeling an ecosystem without decomposers. Now, 
scientists and engineers use mo uh, simulations to help them model what happens out in the real world because it's really hard to replicate what happens in an ecosystem uh, because it takes so long for something to take effect in an ecosystem. So a simulation helps speed up that process so that scientists and engineers can study something. So that's what we're going to do. So for the no decomposers model, you'll navigate to this uh, URL. And I know it's rather long, so if you have a phone handy that you can take a picture of it or pause the video and write it down, it's the way to get to uh, this modeling tool through the Amplify curriculum. You'll use this username and password, just like you did in the last lesson. And if a computer is not available for you right now, there is in your packet this cutout, so you can cut the different pieces out and move them uh, wherever you'd like, okay? And now for the directions. In this model, beetles represent all the decomposers. And in a real ecosystem, there are many types of decomposers, such as bacteria, earthworms, and mushrooms. You'll model what happens when there are no decomposers in an ecosystem. So if you're, on, if you're going to be on a computer, then set the beetles to not in ecosystem. Then you'll complete the rest. Before you go, there's always a thinking tool to go with a simulation, right? So turn to this page in your packet. What happens without decomposers? Respond to the question, explain what happens to the grass in the completed no decomposers model. The question is, when are there no decomposers, what happens to the grass? The, the other half of this page in your packet suggests that you draw if it helps explain your thinking. I'm going to say you should draw first because it will help you support your thinking. See you in a bit. What happened in the sim? I'm going to bring up a sample here. So with no soil nutrients or no soil matter coming from the beetles, there is less available for the grass. If the grass isn't thriving, then there's less food matter for the zebras. If the zebras are not thriving, then there's less food matter for the beetles and there's less food matter for the cheetahs. Everything in the food web is impacted. So I'm gonna put that right here in my drawing space. Make sure you show your teacher and your classmates what you drew and what you learned from the simulation or from the drag and drop handout in your packet. Some of you might have written this as your idea. The plants don't get nutrients, so the grass doesn't have what it needs to grow and thrive. The grass will become unhealthy. That's what happens when there's no decomposers. All right, it's time to conclude the unit. Are you ready? We've talked about how ecologists study ecosystems. We discovered that ecologists are especially interested in observing the parts of ecosystems, the organisms and the non-living parts, to draw conclusions about them. They investigate how the parts work together. Remember that? Bringing things together? That happens when something goes wrong with one part. What did we do that was like real ecologists? We studied this ecosystem and learned many things about the organisms in it and how they're connected. We learned about other ecosystems too. What is the same across all ecosystems? Jot down or write down a few things to share with your classmates the next time you are in a class meeting. What did they say that you'd like to add to your thinking? Make sure you write their ideas down too. All right, we investigated energy and matter throughout this unit. What did you discover about energy and matter? 
and how they move through an ecosystem. Make sure you write something down that you'd like to share with your teacher during a class meeting or through a post. Congratulations! We've learned and done so much in this unit. You've been with me as well as teacher Heather throughout the entire unit. And we discussed ideas, read, wrote arguments, used models, and investigated like ecologists throughout the unit in order to come up with plans to help the organisms in the project area grow and thrive. I have certainly enjoyed my time working with you. And Ruby and Claude would also like to add that while we're all at home, to remember to be kind to yourself and to be kind to each other. Thank you so much for sharing this time with me. Bye for now.